Hello, my friends and viewers at home. My name is Mother Abuchi Morin from Geography Department of St. Charles College, Onisha. Our topic today is map reading and the interpretation. Let us look at the specific objectives. By the end of the lesson, you students will be able to define map reading, define scale, explain how to find direction of one place from another, explain how to calculate the bearing of one place from another, draw the contour form of some landforms. Map reading, compass direction and angular bearing. A map is a flat representation of the real world. It is one of the geographers too. The shape on the screen is a simple representation of the map. Definition of map reading. Map reading is the ability to read, understand, and interpret the signs and symbols used in the maps. One can draw Nigeria on a sheet of paper. This is done by the use of scale. A scale is the relationship between the length on the map and the actual distance on the ground. For example, 1 cm represents 2 km. 1 cm on the map represents 200,000 cm or 2 km on the ground. Compass direction or cardinal points. The direction of a place from another is shown by the use of cardinal points. We have four major cardinal points. Direction of a place in respect to the cardinal points. North, south, east and west. These are the four major cardinal points. We also have eight cardinal points and finally 16 cardinal points. Eight cardinal points. North, south, east and west. Between north and, north and east, you have northeast. Between south and east, you have southeast. Between south and west, you have southwest. Between north and west, you have northwest. 16 cardinal points. North, north of northeast, northeast, east of northeast, east, east of southeast, southeast, south of southeast, south, south of southwest, southwest, west of southwest, west, west of northwest, northwest. North of Northwest. These are the 16 cardinal points. Let us now find the direction of Oka from Onisha. In order to determine the actual direction of a place from another on a map given by showing an arrow pointing in the direction of the north, procedure for finding direction. Locate the two places involved on the map. From the question I asked, what is the direction of Oka from Onisha? So the three places are Oka and Onisha. Place your four cardinal points at the observer's position. Use your ruler. Join the observer's position to the other place. Then check the direction where it is found. The observer's position is the place that bears the wall from. So from my question, the, the observer position is Onisha. Find the direction of Oka from Onisha. The direction of Oka is east of northeast. When you look at our cardinal point, say that it is east of eh, northeast. Angular bearing. The most accurate way of showing the direction of a place is by the use of angular bearing. The direction of a place is written down as an angle measured clockwise from the true north. Bearing is expressed in degrees. Protractor is used to measure the angles in degrees. Let us find the, the, the bearing of Oka from Onisha. Procedure for measuring bearing. One, locate the two places involved on the map, Oka and Onisha. Two, place your cardinal points at the observer's position. That is the town that bears the word from. That is Onisha. Use your ruler. Join Oka to Onisha with a straight line. Place your protractor on the side of the line from the north, and the degree which falls on the line is the bearing, is the bearing measured clockwise. It is measured clockwise from the north. Example, what is the bearing of Oka from Onisha? Then what is the bearing of Onisha from Oka? Let's see the difference. Then from the diagram 
on this frame. You draw your north-south east-west line at the base, which is Onisha. Then you draw a straight line connecting Oka from Onisha. Then the angle in between the line is 70 degrees, which means the bearing of Oka from Onisha is 70 degrees. In terms of direction, it is east of northeast. Let us find the bearing of Onisha from Oka. You put your cardinal point at Oka, which is the observer's position. Then use a straight line and join Oka to Onisha. Then you, from the true north, you use your protractor. Calculate the angle between the true north and the line that joins to Onisha. The angle there is 250 degrees. The bearing of Oka from Onisha is 250 degrees. In terms of direction, it is west of southwest. If a place is on the north or 60 degrees, it is north. North is 45 degrees. East, 90 degrees. South is 135 degrees. South, 180 degrees. Southwest, 225 degrees. West, 270 degrees. Northwest, 315 degrees. Conventional signs. These are symbols or signs by which the natural and artificial features of an area are represented on the map. They are used for the purpose of clarity, brevity, and to make the map neat and less clumsy. For example, blue color is used for water or drainage, green color for vegetation, brown color for relief. Then look at the diagram here. The dots are used to show settlement. S C H school, C H church, C T court. So when you see these things on the map, you know what they represent. Let us show relief on a map. First, contour. The most important means of shared relief is by the means of a contour. Contour is a line that joins places of equal height above mean sea level. Then from the contour form on the screen, we have 50, we have 100, 150. These are the heights. The first line is 50. Anything that is above the line 50 is above 50, but not up to 100. Then the second line, anything that is below the line 100 is below 100. Then anything that is above the line 100 is above 100. Then the third line, anything that is above the line 150 is above 150. Then look at the real diagram, the natural feature. Look at the hill. You have zero, you have 50, you have 100, you have 150. The hill is not up to 200. The form lines. These are very much like contour lines. They are shown with broken lines. It is a mere approximation of height. It is used where the land is, has not been accurately measured. Maybe a, a surveyor wants to survey an area, but has not measured the area. But being a specialist in that area, he can just do a mere approximation of the height by measuring it like this. But when he actually measures the land and got the actual measurement, the line will now be joined straight. But if it are not the actual to measure, it is shown by broken lines. Trigonometric station or angle of triangulation. This is a type of survey where the land is divided into triangles for easy survey. It is shown by triangle with certain figures besides it. It is shown on the highest point in the map. So this is a, this triangle with the figure 4, 3, 0. So you look at the map. The highest point in the map from the contour line is 400. Then this particular spot that is measured 330 has been measured. That particular spot has been measured. That's why so that's the highest point in the map. We call it a trigonometrical stations, where angle of triangulations are being measured. Other methods of showing reliefs in the map are spot heights, hatches, benchmarks. 
counter representation of landforms, vertical interval. It is the difference in height between two successive contour lines in that map. Vertical interval on this map is 100 meters. We have 100, we have 200, we have 300. So, 200 is 100 meters above 100. Then 300 is 100 meters above 200. So, it is the side of the relief. It can be gentle or steep. Gentle slope. It is shown with widely spaced contour lines. From the diagram here, you can see that the lines are widely spaced. 1B, steep slope. It is shown with closely spaced contour line. You see that the contour lines here are close together. So look at the real picture of a steep slope. It is sharp. This is the highlands. So it is sharp. 2. Concave slope. On a map, the concave slope is shown by combination of gentle slope and steep slope. Gentle slopes are shown at the lower ground and steep slope as the land rises. From the diagram, you can see that the 50 to 100 are spaced out, 100 to 150 are spaced out, but as the land rises, the contour lines are close together. Then look at the diagram there. It shows the nature of a concave slope. Concave, convex slope. It is shown by combination of gentle slope and steep slope. Steep slope are shown at the lower ground and the gentle slope as the land rises. From the diagram here, you see that there are gaps at the lower, there are gaps at the upper ground and and at the lower ground, the lands are close together. Then look at the diagram here. This is the shape of a convex slope. Somebody at B cannot see somebody at A. Valley. A valley is a depression between two highland areas. It is shown by a V-shaped contour lines with low land protruding or nosing into highland. In map reading, we are very much interested in heights. From the height, you can know which area is low land or which area is a high land. So look at the contour line here. We say that a valley is a V-shaped contour line. All these things here are V-shaped. But how do you find which one is a valley? I say that it is shown by V-shaped contour line with low land protruding into high land. You look at 50 here. This line, this here, this place, you see that 50 is pointing into 100 and 100 is pointing into 150. But here, you see that 150 is pointing into 100 and 100 is pointing into 150. The two shapes are different, but that all of them are V shaped forms. So, this place I marked an arrow is a valley. Because here you see 50 pointing into 100, 100 pointing into 150. Another one show to know whether an area is in valley, you can see a river flowing on it. Because river flow not flow on valleys. Spore. A spore, it is a V-shaped contour line with highland areas. Highland area protruding into the lowland area. The front of the diagram here, this, I marked it, this area I marked it an arrow. Fifth, 150 is pointing into 100, and 100 is pointing into 50. So this place is a spore. This place is a valley. This place is a spore, and this place is a valley. After a valley, you have a spore. After a spore, you have a valley. But both are V-shaped contour line. But look at the height to differentiate between the two. Ridge. It is an elongated highland with uniform slopes on both sides. From the diagram, you see that the contour lines are elongated. 
Sometimes it can be steep, but the one on the map is a, a steeper ridge. Saddles or course. These are high, these are found in highland areas. They are mel, a small lowland region connecting two peaks. From the map here, you can see at 500 that the land break. Then you have one peak here and another peak here. This gap in between the two peaks is what they call the saddle or call. This is the real feature, the real feature, natural feature of a, a saddle. We also have the following landforms, pass, plateau, conical hill, water shed or water divide, and shapes of valley based on their stages. We have come to the end of this lesson, and I hope my students will enjoy the lesson. Let me evaluate you by using these uh, questions. One, define map reading. Two, draw the 16 cardinal points. Three, use your atlas, find the political map of Nigeria, and from it, calculate the angular bearings of the following towns, and also find their directions from Abuja, Enugu, Lagos, Sokoto, Kaduna, Mina from Abuja. Abuja is the observer's uh, position. Four, draw the contour forms of the following valley, spore, ridge, and the uh, pass. Do the assignment and submit to my WhatsApp number 080 Thanks and God bless you.